last year would have changed this year. San Diego State up 3 nothing. Arizona punting, high snap. Ramey Peru kicks it through the end zone. That's a penalty. Oh, well, it's time for a pep talk by Coach Matt. Stay up. Be positive. If you make a mistake, forget it. Go on to the next play. All right, I'm ready. Late second quarter, San Diego State going for it. Fourth and one. Handoff. Larry Ned fumbles, picked up by Brandon Nash. Brandon Nash not only picks it up, he does something with it. 56 yards for the score. Arizona defeats San Diego State 23 to 10. Arizona junior QB Jason Johnson made his first career start through his first touchdown pass. It was a four-yarder to Brandon Marshall in the third as Johnson completes 21 of 32 for 176 yards and one interception. UNLV in Arkansas, fourth quarter, Rebs up 10-7. They're punting. Ryan McDonald hadn't been in the game the whole game, and oh, you got to be sad in a kicking game, and he was not. Muff the snap, a little nervous. He was just in there to pooch. It didn't work out well, but the Razorbacks have done nothing on offense. Just one first down from scrimmage before this drive, but Ryan Sorahan finds George Wilson. They convert a fourth and 10. A long pass play got it down close. No timeouts left. They take a chance. They run it. Cedric Cobbs into the house. And sometimes you feel like a nut, and Houston does. As Arkansas escapes 14 to 10. Minnesota and Toledo. Rockets already up 10 0. Remember how Chester Taylor ran through Penn State last year? Minnesota is getting a first hand look. Chester off to the races. 64 yards. He'll take it in. Toledo up 17 0. For about a year, the Toledo Sports Information staff, they quoted me saying, Chester Taylor is the real deal. It's time for a new quote. How about Chester's going to play on Sunday? How about Chester's one of the best backs in college football? Toledo drills Minnesota 38 7. And the Blacksburg and Beamer, things started off okay. Grant Knoll started very well. Yeah, he looked like a point guard out there since he talked about basketball. Watch how he distributes the ball here. Just gets it to Andre Davis and lets him do the work. 48 yards for a touchdown. Not a long pass, just the perfect pass to let his man get a little bit of rack. He comes back later in the first quarter and completes his second pass to Jared Ferguson. Let's Ferguson go right to work on it again. Just get it to the guy like a point guard. Let the guy make his play one more time. This time he finds Sean Witten for his third pass. Again, a nice throw on the move. Sets up things nicely for him. And then he comes back one more time and finds Ferguson for the touchdown. A ball he can handle and move down the field, Mark. Oh, wow, that looks excellent, but you still have to rely on the run. And here's Lee Suggs, the touchdown machine. It's a nice long run. He hits the hole downfield, doesn't get touched, and takes it into the end zone. But then they come back to the pass. Let's not forget Andre Dares. And quarterback Grant Knoll steps up, reads the defense, and pops it right in there for another touchdown score for the Hokies. He had nine of his first ten, and then Lee Suggs, this is the moment he goes down with a knee injury, Mark. And keep an eye on his left knee. He's got a plant that crosses over, gets grabbed at the end of the play. Keep an eye right there, the left one where he cuts. He's going to come out on the field with a brace from his thigh to his ankle. It's an anterior cruciate ligament tear. I've had those before. They're saying there's a possibility he can come back, but if it's torn, he is lost for the season. 52 to 10, the final in that game. They're going to scope his knee on Monday. He also has a torn medial meniscus ligament. They're going to repair that. They're going to try to determine if this ACL injury is an old one or a fresh one. And as you mentioned, if it is a new one, that happened. A little stars and stripes as we parachute into the OU Air Force game. First quarter, no score. Oklahoma punting and a little pressure. Jeff Ferguson, a great play to sidestep a defender and get the punt off there. And good coverage by the Sooners. They're on the first quarter. Oklahoma on the Air Force 28. And Quentin Griffin, they can't find him and they can't stop him. And he's off to the races. Deep into Falcon territory. Hibble would punch it in for a touchdown. OU up 7 0. And Hibble seemed to find himself just a little bit today. I think after being a starter, not for the first time since 97, he found himself after last week. He looked good in the pocket. See that throw? Right on time, right on target. No happy feet like he had last week. On this series, he came of age. Three straight plays. He found receivers down the field. We didn't see that last week. That's a perfect pass right on time to Andre Wolfe. Picked up 54 yards. And watch him come right back on the next play. He finds Trent Smith in the end zone. 
Nice, easy touchdown. Mark, we see it. We see a quarterback come of age in this ball game, regardless of what the stats say. What I like about no hesitation in his decision making. He knew today that he wanted to air the ball out vertically down the field to play. He knew where he wanted to place the ball, and he did an outstanding job at it. And as you said, we're seeing a quarterback come of age now, and he's only going to get better and better. Three in a row against the Buffs. DJ Bush getting his first start, and severe tactical error a pick six Donald Strickland and the Buffs are up seven nothing coming off that disappointing loss to Fresno State later in the first Bobby Purify Purify who is he where do these bags come from he's got a boatload of them I mean, Bobby Purify scoring here Buffaloes go up 14 nothing remember their top bat Marcus Houston's out with an injury Buffs up 17 7 Bush struggling again Bush intercepted again Michael Lewis scoring again 24 to 7, Colorado is rolling over Sonny Lubick's team. Later in the third quarter, did you mention Colorado had a lot of running backs? Oh, now Chris Brown. I mean, come on, how many do they have? No Cortland Johnson here. Chris Brown goes this time 36 yards up the right side. And since we had a little Chris Brown, we might as well go back to Bobby Purify. And the big fella is making a nice hole up there, Mark. Those guys are doing a tremendous job up front. And what I like to see is a push downfield. They're knocking the defenders downfield and giving them back a direction that he wants to go. 41 to 14, Colorado snaps that two-game losing streak to Colorado State. Huge day for both backs. Purify going for a butt 91. Brown for 121. Gary Barnett got back to the in the big house. <laughs> Michigan against Miami of Ohio. Uh, Boyd Carr without his quarterback, Drew Henson, is below the Mendoza line, I believe. So John Navarre getting another start. You recall he started the first four in Henson's absence last year when he was hurt. Navarre putting it out there. Marquise Walker now the threat. 39-yard pass play there. Three plays later. Took Michigan a while. Once they got inside the five, they were placing four starters on the offensive line. B.J. Askew over the top. He lost the ball, but they call it a touchdown. Wolverines up 7-0. It's 10-0 in the second quarter. Ben Roethlisberger looking for the academic All-American. Eddie Tillich and the extra point was missed. Red Hawks make it a four-point game at 10-6. And the Red Hawk defense playing tough. Michigan's going for it on fourth and one. And Askew, nothing. This is very upsetting to Michigan. This is a team that you would think would pound the ball in against Miami of Ohio. Well, they didn't. It took them a couple of quarters to finally get their offense going in the right direction. But still, the question marks for Michigan. Here they have to run a reverse. They can't just pound the ball and take advantage of a smaller opponent. They have to go into some tomfoolery. Hey. It does work against it, but I like to that's see. That's a math the, team you're calling the, small. The bigger, stronger, better <laughs> opponent. Team that's turned into a payoff team, taking the check to go to Lincoln and get their brains beat in, or at least that's what everybody thought. Keo Craver fumbles, and the Trojans recover, and it leads to former Auburn running back, Demontre Carter, going in, and Troy State spoiling things on top 7-0, but here comes Eric Kraft. And Eric Crouch had a tough time throwing the ball today, had a decent time rushing the ball today, but here, he's got all the time in the world to throw this ball. Perfect protection overthrows his receiver. This is the problem with the Nebraska passing attack. They can't get in sync. It's picked off there by Troy State. You know, that's what we've been saying since before the season. Nebraska's season will hinge on the fact whether they can throw the ball in big games, but they seem to have found a weapon at the eye back. Yeah, how about Darren Dietrich at the running back spot? No, he's not Thunder Collins. Power off play, offside there, and then you got the nice step into the end zone. He was huge in the backfield. Again, power play off tackle once again. Not the option. Saving the option for Notre Dame next week, and Dietrich made a nice statement after being suspended for last week's ball game. 42 to 14, the final. Dietrich goes for 177 yards. Crouch just over 50% in the passing game. Florida State and Duke. Chris Ricks making his Chris debut Winkie's as a starting left. quarterback. He never taken a snap. He's got Chris Winkie's old number. Let's see if he plays like him at least early well, on. You know, like a young guy, he struggled early. There was his first pass. Not a good one. Thrown a little bit behind. The catch was made. This one, eh, gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. The young guy's going to struggle early on. You expected that, and he's got young receivers as well. Watch him here. Now, chance to find his guy. Uh, he hangs it up and allows the D back to get in position to make a play. But Rod, this is Duke. The Blue Devils. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he got better. He got better as you would expect. He's going to feel it later, but right now again, eh, another bad pass. It's still Duke. It's still Duke. 
but now he's starting to feel it. Now, late in the second, he finally, finally connects with his man down the field and picks up Nick Maddox for a 27-yard touchdown. Now he really comes alive in the third quarter because he gets confident. Look, Look at around there. Oh, no, that's too it. confident. Bobby Bowden told him, I don't want to see that again. But you see what it did? It made him feel good about himself. He's loose now, and he just wings this ball way down the field. Touchdown pass once again. For Fonzo Thorpe, the freshman, making the catch right there. Uh, he's a guy that they're depending on now with all of the injuries they've had to wide receivers. Florida State rolling over Duke 55 to 13, and the nation's longest losing streak continues for the Blue Devils. Marshall and Florida, the number one team in the land, the Mighty Gators. Coach Spurrier against his former defensive coordinator, Bob Pruitt. First quarter, Gators up 7 0. Rex Grossman, Ernest Graham. Strolling in, perhaps a little too leisurely for some liking. Florida leading 14-0. Later in the quarter, Grossman, Rache Caldwell. Grossman standing in there with plenty of time, delivering beautifully. What quarterback controversy? Florida leads 21-0. It's 28-0. Still in the second quarter, and Grossman is going to be looking for Taylor Jenkins. Mark. And for Rex Grossman, this was like a 7-on-7 seven -seven drill, which means you don't rush the quarterback. You go out there with the wide receivers and running backs and throw it around, and the defenders try to catch up to you. It was easy. It's pitch and catch. Touchdown, Florida. Threw for 375 yards on the night, but of course, wouldn't be Florida if we didn't see the other quarterback. Brock Berlin with a nice throw there to Carlos Perez. 28-yard touchdown. Grossman played the majority of the game until this thing was well in hand, but frankly, it was well in hand by halftime. 49-14 to the final. Jabbar Gaffney going over 100 yards receiving. Marshall played without six players. Of course, 12 were suspended for that NCAA problem. They're allowing them to stagger those suspensions. Certainly, the thundering hurt didn't need to be undermanned going to the swamp. Tennessee taking on Syracuse. Phil Fulmer leading the Big Orange. Tennessee's first offensive play. The Iceman coming. Casey Clawson to Dante Stallworth, 37 yards, and the Big Orange on top, 7-0. Later in the first, Troy Noons looking for Maurice Jackson, but finds Rashad Baker Rod. You've got to be proud. Oh, this was sick. Watch this play. One-handed leaping grab. Oh, if you've got that kind of athletic ability, you ought to be a wide receiver. The second quarter is 7-0 Tennessee. Syracuse deep in its own end. Noons steps back there. I think Troy was confused by the checkerboard. He was in the end zone. That should be Troy's story. He should stick to it. Constantine Ritzman with the safety. is 9-0 balls. It's 12-3. Travis Stevens slashing in there. Tennessee very sluggish on offense for much of this game. It's taking control now because Syracuse could do nothing against the volunteer defense. Here's Dwight Freeney. Yeah, they handled him really well. He got off early on, but then they decided, you want to go outside and rush a quarterback? We'll take two guys and ride you out and run the ball right inside of you. Well, right, as you saw, it took two guys from Syracuse to block him because he did nothing but disrupt the entire offense or the entire first half of the Syracuse Olympics. Corey Larkin scoring the touchdown there, 33-9 the final. I think probably the Tennessee coaching staff, Mark, heard you at halftime say, don't leave Will Bartholomew, the fullback on Freeney by himself. One gonna, fullback on the best pass rusher on the field. <laughs> My daughter can do a better killed. job than that <laughs> diagram and that <laughs> game plan. He had debut under Rich Rodriguez against Boston College, and William Green was bent on spoiling it. Green bursting through the middle, tripped up at the Mountaineer 15. He'd later catch a touchdown pass, tied the game at 10, and then Green doing it again, this time from 67. Just exploding to the outside, not getting touched by a defender. Excellent execution by the guys up front. Here's a player that gained over 1,000 yards last year in William Green. No one talked about the H word, the Heisman word. But after today's performance over 200 yards, I think you've got to make it. Hey, 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 shh. I'm the Heisman, okay? <laughs> Those holes were huge. <laughs> 34 to 10, Rich Rodriguez debut goes down in smoke, courtesy of William Green. He went over 200, scored three times. Pick six last year against Louisiana Lafayette. Brian Koppel from New Mexico State gets his punt blocked. Philip Geiger is going to recover it for the touchdown, and the horns are on top just like that, 7 to nothing. Near the end of the first half, it's 17 0. Here's Sims working to Montreal Flowers. Yeah, well, he struggled early on in this ball game, but he puts this ball right there. Flowers, nice quick reaction to pick it up for the touchdown. 17 to 33, 182 yards, couple of scores for Mark Mays, Heisman candidate in Texas Rolls. 41 to 7. You know, I'm not going to let you get away without that. It's early. AM struggle with McNeese State. Almost an embarrassing night for RC Slocum. The 38 to 24, the final there is the Aggies are able to get on through and take care of McNeese. Mark Ferris with a nice night, 254 yards through the end. Down in the SEC, Eli Manning. That's Archie's kid. Peyton's little brother, the younger audience might know him as Peyton's brother. His dad, of course, a legend at Ole Miss, and Eli working on becoming one. Zomar Rayford, a 27-yard game. Now Manning 
rolling. Chris Collins, give him six. Ole Miss on top of Murray State, 14 to seven. They go on to a 49-14 victory. Eli threw five touchdown passes. That is, that's a new school record. There's a new Manning in the record book in Oxford. Look at Manning's numbers, 20 of 23, 271 yards. Battle for the rag. Tulane and LSU, first play from scrimmage. You could have seen this coming if you watched the Tulane-BYU game last week. But Brandon Tofield, gone. Yeah. Well, you figure, though, after giving up 70 points last week, the Tulane defense might give up 105 this week. But uh-uh, that didn't happen. It's a huge interstate battle. We pick it up in the first quarter. Cardinals striking first. Less than a minute in. Dave going and Zeke Parker downfield. Watch the nice move coming up down around the 15. The cutback, 82-yard touchdown. Parker, six catches, 184 yards. And Louisville up seven zip. Late in the first, Eric Abney fielding the punt on the 47 and turns the corner, dips the shoulder. And Abney's got some speed and nice cutting. It's a 47-yard punt return for a touchdown. We're tied at seven. Let's fast forward to the third quarter. Tied at 10, Ragone hitting Ronnie Gent. From the shotgun, 11 yards, touchdown, extra point, failed, 16-10, Louisville. Fourth quarter, same score, 16-10, same two again. Ragone to Jet, 11 yards out, touchdown. 22-10, Ragone, 21-34, 368 yards and three touchdowns. Then T.J. Patterson gets the handoff here and into the end zone to seal it. The Cardinals win it. On campus, Illinois and Cal, button heads in Berkeley, first quarter, Antonio Harris, top shelf, 7-0 Illini. Still first quarter, Harris again over the pile and lots of daylight. He had three touchdowns Saturday. Illinois scored 24 points on his first four drives. Second quarter, Kurt Kittner, what a day he had. Finds Brandon Lloyd, Illini up 31-7. Kittner Saturday, 18 of 34, 297 yards. Still in the second quarter, Kittner finding Lloyd again. Lloyd, eight catches, 178 yards. Big return for him after missing all of last season with a broken leg. Illinois spanks Cal. London College Park, Ronald Curry. Only well, had a rough day. More on that in a minute. First this, second quarter, third and 13. Willie Parker taken down at the goal line by Tyrone Stewart. That's a safety. It's 9-7 Turks. Third quarter now, Carolina from its own 11. Curry. Uh, Curry 6 of 12 on the day with that pick replaced by Darian Durant for the second straight game. Fourth quarter, third and goal for Maryland. Sean Hill hits Scooter Monroe. Terps offense, no turnovers. Ralph Friedgen becomes the first Maryland coach to win his debut since Tom Nugent in 59. College football now, Central Florida, 18th ranked Clemson in Death Valley. Jimmy Frizzell catches Ryan Schneider's pass, but he gets ear holed by Charles Halfley and still hangs on. That's why you're in the highlights, Jimmy. Second quarter, Woody Dantzler keeps it. Dantzler ran for 46, 15 to 25 passing. Clemson wins 21 13. The Citadel at 14th ranked Georgia Tech. George Godsey. 40-yard touchdown to Daryl Smith. It's 14-0 Yellow Jackets. Godsey Saturday, 14 of 16, 222 yards and two touchdowns. Here's your other one later in the first quarter. Kerry Watkins and watch the footwork. Oh, sensational. Tech wins 35-7. Boise State at 22nd rank. South Carolina, five seconds left. Second quarter, Boise State trying to field goal. Gets blocked by Dennis Quinn and USC's Rashad Faison going 82 yards. Carolina wins 32-13. Derek Watson, by the way, ran for 71 yards on 13 carries.